messages will be able to be verified via yum now yum is just a front end to rpm but it is a much more developed front end which facilitates the auto dependency resolution that we mentioned which is lacking with plain old rpm so it's a wrapper to rpm which allows us to manage our programs successfully so now we're on to installing something now yum allows you to search for packages and install based on what you've searched for here's a list of various packages what may be of interest to us for example let's see whether or not we have GFTP installed so since we're now pros with RPM we'll query all grep case insensitive GFTP and then we'll also change into our old PWD and see whether or not there's a GFTP file and there is GFS let's LSL gnome to see if there's a gnome dash GFTP doesn't appear to be perhaps it's been removed from this version so there doesn't appear to be anything on the FTP front. Let's LSL grep FTP to see what actually is available. There's LFTP, which is actually installed. There's VSFTP D. Let's see whether or not we've got that installed. VSFTP D. And it's searching the database and it's not installed. So without actually delving into the VSFTPD server just yet we could use yum to install this package so let's set up a task from our client our first client so now that the client set up for is to install let's search first search and install packages so we've selected a target in fact, let's even use a simpler package, DOS to Unix, Unix to DOS. First, let's use RPM to remove them. So, RPM E, DOS to Unix, and Unix to DOS. Let's get rid of these packages, because if we install VSFTPD, we might be inclined to begin studying it. So, we don't want to do that. Let's echo the exit status. So, now, presumably... Both of those packages have been removed. Let's RPM query info DOS to Unix and Unix to DOS. So both have been removed. So we'll target DOS to Unix and Unix to DOS. So from the perspective of yum, let's do a which yum. It's in user bin. Let's RPM query file user bin yum. It belongs to the yum package. Let's RPM query configuration file yum and yum uses yum.conf and version groups.conf which is beneath the yum directory and it also contains a log rotate directory since yum writes log information to a log file beneath var log so yum with help returns various options momentarily on how you may use yum again it's a front end to rpm to search for packages, we use the search option, and this allows us to search given a string. So, for example, let's yum search DOS to Unix, a package for which we're interested. And notice it reads it's not registered with RHN, which is fine, it isn't. Yum had to go through an initialization to determine what's available on the server, 2679 packages on this particular source. And it reads that DOS to Unix is I686, and it's a text file format converter. So it is there, it is available, and can be installed. Now, if we'd like to install it, we use the install option. If you want more information about the package, then you use the info option. So, for example, yum, let's just find our box here, our command, info. DOS to Unix, and this should look terribly familiar as query package info. Name, architecture, version, release. These are all fields stored within the RPM metadata area, which means YUM is able to use RPM and just represent it using a different interface. So it's basically just a front end. So info gives you info. Let's just note that we're running through these options we're doing different things here so removes 
both packages. And then B, yum search Unix to DOS, or DOS to Unix, doesn't matter. Searches for package. And C, yum info Unix to DOS returns slash dump slash enumerates package metadata. And then of course install will install the package. Now that brings up a point before we install. Supposing we specify just a fraction of the name such as DOS to UN or DOS to UN or DOS to UNI. Notice it doesn't read as if to assume it would use some sort of regular expressions matching to find the package. Now let's look through some more of these options. So you can also check for problems in the RPM database. You can remove cache data. You can downgrade a package, moving from a higher to a lower, for example. You can look at the transaction history. You can even look at a list of repositories, the repo list, to see what's currently configured from where you actually have access to a package. So for example, yum repo list will tell us the repositories that are currently configured, including the number of packages. So currently one repository with just under 2,700 packages. You can also list a particular package or groups of packages like text editors and so on. So let's go ahead and install and we'll just modify the search changing this to install and this will go through the process of checking the package and installing it. Notice it reads resolving dependencies. It's checking to see whether or not there are dependencies that are unmet. And then if there were dependencies that were unmet, we'd be prompted to make a decision concerning those dependencies. So let's look at the output that's presented. Installing DOS to Unix, transaction summary. It installed the package. Well, it's actually asking us now if we want to install the package. So this is what will transpire. Architecture version, the repository, its size. 15k will be transferred over HTTP when extracted will be 17k and it wants to know if it's okay so let's include our yes command and this will install the package momentarily and momentarily that's the RPM that blinked by with the hash and now it's installed let's echo the exit status let's RPM query list DOS to Unix to see what's included with the 17k Notice it also includes a Mac to Unix. Let's LSL user bin question mark question mark three question marks to Unix to see what's there. Notice that Mac to Unix is a shortcut to DOS to Unix. Special invocation. Also notice that the package is just under 15,000 bytes and with its ancillary components, the man pages, the directories that are created in total, it's 17,000 bytes as projected by the yum installer. Now what if you try to reinstall the same package using yum? Let's see how it resolves it. it. Comes back with nothing to do because it's already installed and it's the latest version according to the repositories that are set up. If multiple repositories are set up and a later version exists on one of the repositories, then that discrepancy can be handled at that particular point. But in this case, there's only one repository. So insofar as YUM is concerned, we have the latest version. So it's really a check against all of the versions across all repositories to determine whether or not we have the latest version. Now supposing you wanted to reinstall a package because for some reason something's broken such as one of the files because of a failed RPM verification check. So if you insist and you specify the reinstall option you're prompted yet again to reinstall the package. This is akin to the replace packages option when installing a package or upgrading a package. So let's just note 
yum install unix to dos and installs the package once however if it needs to be reinstall use yum reinstall unix to dos reinstalls package ie like the replace packages option with rpm which allows you to reinstall and you can affect this reinstallation multiple times we have cited unix to dos when we've installed dos to unix but that's fine because we're going to install the unix to dos command momentarily now what if you try to reinstall a package that's not installed like unix to dos for example well if you attempt to reinstall the package it's searching and it says there's another app running let's see what's going on and it says it's available but it's not installed so eventually it was able to run and it knows that it's not installed so trying to reinstall something that is not installed will not work you need to install it so let's install it and this will put unix to dos which will match our notes which also is 14,000 bytes in its RPM but 16,000 bytes on the file system and now if we RPM query list unix to dos we should see its contents which include the unix to dos binary a man page and the documentation directory which contains a copyright file now another option that might be useful if you're installing packages especially in some sort of unattended or mass mode is to use the assume yes option or y option so yum y reinstall unix to dos for example will answer yes for you wherever possible unless there's something that you must answer manually so let's assume yes for the installation process and when it gets to the stage unless it needs you to specify yes it'll automatically install it for you as we see in that particular case so that saves us a step so assumes yes when prompted which promotes an installation that doesn't require as much intervention now supposing you'd like to see a history of commands like a command line history with bash of yum commands that have been affected on your system which of course will be telling of what's been installed and removed and potentially by whom yum history will return that so returns usage history and this is ie like the bash shell history which is queryable and can be quite useful especially for auditing purposes to determine what's changed on your system so let's look at the yum history to see what's occurred thus far and here we see the various actions reinstall install reinstall so on and so forth and it's all been logged with the various timestamps and of course this should be root who performs these particular steps which leads us to another point supposing you wanted to be able to remove the packages recently installed of course just like with rpm you can remember the key with yum is that it's streamlined it's a wrapper to rpm which allows 